All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Obeisance channel. This is episode four of A Noob's Guide to Hyperland, my attempt of bridging the gap between power user and new users that may not necessarily understand all of the fundamentals behind Linux or Hyperland, but yet still give you something that enables you to use Hyperland nevertheless. Uh, this come about because my 14-year-old, who also used Arch Linux, by the way, saw me using Hyperland and really took a liking to it and decided he wanted to learn how to make his own. Unfortunately, getting a 14-year-old like my son to study anything is next to impossible. Therefore, I have decided I'm going to try and do my best to make an entertaining, easy way to follow along and break down all of my configurations in a micromanaged way, in a way that is easy for noobs to understand. Yes, I just called my son a noob. So if you're following along and you're finding any of this useful, please consider hitting that like button to let me and my son know I'm not as dumb as I look sometimes. If I am as dumb as I look sometimes, consider hitting that dislike button and let me know why in the comment section below. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and dive straight into it. You're going to have to forgive me, guys. I have been working for like 12 hours to get this damn thing up and running. I'm getting tired. I'm getting kind of slurry with my words. So it's going to get a little more casual after this because I need a sip of coffee every now and then. Oh, yeah. All right. Key bindings. Noob note. Key bindings in Hyperland. Key bindings allow you to control your system with shortcuts. Edit the keybindings.conf file to define the custom actions for launching apps, window management, and workspace control. I give some examples for those that don't want to listen to me gab, as well as a reference to the Hyperland wiki. Uh, for those that are choosing to follow along, using my dot files, if you'd like to and you're not already, you can download those in the link description below. Um, I've already configured it, configured it for you, but I source a variables.conf. I've done my best to make this uh, build as modular and user-friendly as possible. While I understand while it's, where it's easier to create a configuration that is you know, completely self-contained in a single file, and that's great for power users. It absolutely sucks, you know, super inappropriate things in order to, um, for new users. It just sends them on a tangent. They don't understand this stuff. It's super confusing to look at a mile-long configuration. Therefore, I have segregated all mine into easy bite-sized chunks that make it incredibly modular, easy to modify. If you need to modify something, you know right where to go, and you don't have to search for it. So, um, yeah. Without further ado, there are a few applications you're going to want to install if you're following along with me, one of which, and you're going to just have to use your, your favorite uh, AUR package manager. In my case, I'm just going to use uh, Yay. You could use Aura or something similar. Um, so I'm going to go Yay-S, and you're going to want to install Waypaper. You're going to want to install Hyper idle, hyper lock, hyper paper, and hyper shot. These are all utilities that give you a really traditional desktop experience where you got a, a wallpaper picker if you choose to use it. You have hyper idle which engages hyper lock after a certain amount of time. It'll lock your screen. Uh, we'll cover all of that in a later video. Uh, you've got Hyper Paper, which preloads wallpapers for you for dynamic wallpaper switching, as well as setting up default wallpapers on login. And of course, HyperShot is a screenshot utility. So I definitely recommend installing these if you're following along with me. And uh, yeah, get that taken care of and we'll continue on. Um, here we've got apps. This is uh, key binds that I've got set up for opening Waypaper. Um, I have intentionally omitted all of my anime girls from my wallpapers for those that are a little more sensitive to cute girls, I guess. Um, but I digress. I'm not going to listen to any whining and complaining when I demonstrate this. But um, pressing the main mod and P will open up Waypaper, which gives you your wallpaper selection screen. And so I've got this set up for both vertical and horizontal display. If I were to press um, Alt-Shift-P, it would open up my vertical wallpaper selection. So that's pretty handy to have. That's why I recommend uh, including Waypaper in your installed packages because it's a really nice tool to have. Moving on, we've got to launch default applications, things like your terminal, your file manager, notes, text editor, browser, etc., etc. You can modify these as you wish or add your own as you desire. Um, don't, don't worry about um, 
setting your default applications right now. These key binds are executed using variables and we will be going over your variables.conf file uh, in the next video. So don't worry too much about this. Just read uh, what the variable says and you'll know what it what it's going to do. So for example, main mod or alt E is going to open up my file manager, which in this case is Thunar. Uh, if I hold uh, main mod or alt shift E, E, it's going to open up my terminal uh, file manager, which is Ranger. And these are just personal preferences based on my workflow. So again, go ahead and review these things. And uh, yeah, it, remove anything that you don't want in here. If you're not curious, you know, you don't know what this is, like the uh, main mod slash or main mod O uh, executes my notes. This executes Obsidian. So um, if you don't want those, go ahead and yeet us, delete us them. Make sure you got your default set up. Like for my case, my browser is uh, Alt-B will open my browser. Uh, to lock my screen is Alt-L and so on and so forth. So uh, next we've got functions. If you've got a bunch of windows open and you want to kill one of those, you're going to go ahead and press uh, Main Mod Shift Q and that'll kill an active window. If you want a full screen and active window, it's Main Mod and F will put it into full screen mode. If you want to toggle floating mode, which gives you a more traditional uh, window experience and allows you to more or less overlay a free floating window, you do that with Alt V. If you want to adjust the floating window, maybe it's too big or too small, you pick a corner that you would like to resize from. You right click with your mouse and you're free to drag. Now take note, I did say pick a corner to resize from because it will resize from whichever point of origin that you are actually clicking. So make sure to take note of that. Um, next we've got um, sudo and toggle split. This is for users that use the dwindle layout. We'll talk about that in a later video. Next we've got screenshots. I encourage you to recommend Hypershot because I have these keybinds in here for you guys. And this allows you to uh, press your alt print or alt shift print or shift print and it will either capture output, capture window, or capture region based on your preferences. Uh, window focus is pretty cool. Um, if you don't like using your mouse and you're one of those OG cats that probably uses Vim because you're a glutton for punishment and you're just used to it and can't understand why we don't like that shit, um, you're going to go ahead and press Alt and your arrow keys. In, in my case, with my default configuration, you can see how it's cycling through windows and you can see which ones are active based on the key that I press. Now, let's say you're running C matrix in one window and you're running BTOP in another window and BTOP says, oh, this window is too small. I can't see it. So how do you get BTOP on the bottom right there to take over the master window on the left? Well, that's pretty simple. You hold the uh, Alt key and you make sure that BTOP is highlighted. You press Shift and Left and that's going to throw it into the master layout where BTOP is uh, allowed to do its thing. And so that's how you modify and move windows. You just hold either Alt to change your focus or Alt Shift to swap them around. So that's pretty cool. It's a great functionality to be aware of. It takes a little bit of practice if you've never done it before, but don't get discouraged. I promise you, if you learn to use these keybinds, it's going to make your workflow so much more efficient. Uh, moving on to workspace and wallpaper switching. I did mention I have omitted all of the anime girls from this video and this course for the sake of those that are too easily offended. Um, but I did leave the dynamic workspace um, wallpaper switching functionality that I have programmed for my desktop because those of you who have seen my devlogs, you know that when I key press and swap workspaces, um, it dynamically changes the wallpaper based on the key that I'm pressing or which workspace I am switching to. Um, so definitely, if you want that kind of functionality, you're going to want to keep this, uh, this string here, this, this block, and I will break this down um, at a later date when it's more relevant. Workspace notifications. You guys know that when I switch my workspace, since I don't use a, a status bar, don't really have a need for one. I mean, I've got my clock here and everything else that I would really need. I power down from my terminal, so I don't really have a need for a status bar. If you guys are wondering why in the heck I don't have one, that's why. I do pretty much everything through my terminal. So, um, yeah, that, uh, basically these set up the notifications in the top right that just give me a split second notification like, hey, this is the desktop that you are currently on.
and it was more relevant when I had one wallpaper across all desktops, but since developing my dynamic wallpaper switching setup, uh, it's a little less relevant because I recognize a workspace based on the wallpaper I have set for that space, but it's still nice to have every now and then. So you can modify notifications if you don't want them. You can either comment them out by adding a pound sign before each code, or you can just completely yeet us, delete us this from the configuration and you don't have to worry about it. So um, next we've got workspace switching. It's exactly the same as we've set up with uh, workspace notifications. When I press alt and any corresponding number or letter that I have configured here, it will switch my workspaces accordingly. So go ahead and modify this to your liking. Most people like that at default. I do have 10 set to R because it's kind of like my little focus window anyway. Um, we've got window movement. We've already covered. No, we haven't. We haven't covered that. I've, I've covered it about 100 times because most of you guys know I tried to do these videos in one take. You can imagine how many takes I end up having to do. So uh, let's say we want to move a couple windows. Um, in fact, I think I got a couple running. Okay, so we've already got it. We'll go ahead and close these. So uh, window movement, uh, this is pretty easy. If you want to send a window to another workspace, you just press alt shift in the corresponding number and that will send said window that is uh, activated or highlighted or focused uh, to the corresponding uh, window. So if I want to move this back to workspace two or move it to workspace one or back to workspace three, uh, that's how you do that with alt shift and the corresponding uh, number. A scratch pad workspace. This I got a little ahead of myself a moment ago. Scratch pads are fantastic. For you gamers out there, you're familiar with Steam and you're familiar with the in-game overlay. When you press shift and tab, it brings up kind of a uh, kind of a blank canvas where you can access the web, you can access your friends, your achievements, your guides, and stuff like that. This is essentially the exact same thing, only better because it's desktop wide and I use it exactly like the steam overlay. So for example, when I press alt S it brings up my window. If I close these out, you'll see when I press alt S it dims out my active wall or excuse me, my active workspace. That's because my, my special workspace is activated. So what do I mean that I use it in place of steam, um, overlay or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, basically I will have my works, my scratch pad, my alt S scratch pad set up with all of my social windows. So I'll, I will add like discord signal, uh, beep, beep, steam chat, whatever. I'll even throw in a browser in there for if I need to Google something right quick while I'm in game, it'll all be right there when I need it. So, um, if I, if I alt Shift and S, it'll send my Tilix terminal to my scratch pad. So let's pretend I'm in game right now. I'm full screen. I, yeah, I could just switch over to another desktop and, you know, do my thing and everything. And it's all good and gravy. That's, that works. Hyperland does that very well. Um, your game will be running in the other workspace. You do your thing and, and it's just perfect. It's flawless. But I prefer to stay on my game at all times, just in case something tries to sneak up and bite me in the keister. So when I press Alt S and it brings up my browser and all my social chats and windows and stuff, it allows me to quickly respond or quickly Google whatever I need to do. And then I just Alt S again and I'm back in game doing my thing. So hopefully that explains how, how workspaces work. We'll talk about creating workspaces in a moment. So uh, workspace scrolling, if you press um, bind, uh, which is, or excuse me, you press super key and you mouse wheel up or down, it'll actually switch your, your workspaces for you. It's the exact same thing as alt and any corresponding number. I don't actually use this feature. I just left it there for you guys in case you wanted it. Um, floating window resizing, we already covered how to resize those. Uh, if you want audio control, you install player control and set up your keybinds here. I've got it listed as la laptop specific, but it's not really the case. But this is also, um, let's see here, kept for potential reuse. I don't remember why I had this. I think this is volume setup and stuff like that, brightness control. Uh, yeah, this is kind of irrelevant for me. It's going to be deleted from my configuration because I use Asus control on my laptop. So, um, yeah, that covers key bindings. I hope that you guys... Um, have a better understanding as to how key bindings work and how to navigate your workspaces thanks to the configuration here. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. I do my best to answer every single 
comment that I get. Uh, it might take me a minute. YouTube doesn't always notify me when I get a new one, but I do my best to respond. Uh, if you want more real-time engagement, feel free to swing by the Discord. I'm glad to answer any questions I can. If you like the video, smack that like button. If you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know when those uh, videos drop, hit the notification bell, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Uh, God bless. Take care.